The Diary of a Nobody by George and Weedon Grossmith Read for LibriVox.org by Martin Clifton Chapter 1 We settle down in our new home, and I resolve to keep a diary. Tradesmen trouble us a bit, so does the scraper. The curate calls, and pays me a great compliment. My dear wife Carrie and I have just been a week in our new house, the Laurels, Brickfield Terrace, Holloway. A nice six-roomed residence, not counting basement, with a front breakfast parlour. We have a little front garden, and there is a flight of ten steps up to the front door, which, by the by, we keep locked with the chain up. Cummings, Gowing, and our other intimate friends always come to the little side entrance, which saves the servant the trouble of going up to the front door, thereby taking her from her work. We have a nice little back garden which runs down to the railway. We were rather afraid of the noise of the trains at first, but the landlord said we should not notice them after a bit, and took two pounds off the rent. He was certainly right, and beyond the cracking of the garden wall at the bottom, we have suffered no inconvenience. After my work in the city I like to be at home. What's the good of a home if you are never in it? Home, sweet home, that's my motto. I'm always in of an evening. Our old friend Gowing may drop in without ceremony. So may Cummings, who lives opposite. My dear wife Caroline and I are pleased to see them if they drop in on us. But Carrie and I can manage to pass our evenings together without friends. There is always something to be done. A tin tack here, a Venetian blind to put straight, a fan to nail up, or part of a carpet to nail down all of which I can do with a pipe in my mouth. While Carrie is not above putting a button on a shirt, mending a pillowcase, or practising the Sylvia Gavotte on our new cottage piano, on the three-year system, manufactured by W. Bilkson in small letters, from Collard and Collard in very large letters. It is also a great comfort to us to know that our boy Willie is getting on so well in the bank at Oldham. We should like to see more of him. Now, for my diary. April the 3rd. Tradesman called for custom, and I promised Farmerson the ironmonger to give him a turn if I wanted any nails or tools. By the by, that reminds me, there is no key to our bedroom door, and the bells must be seen to. The parlour bell is broken, and the front door rings up in the servant's bedroom, which is ridiculous. Dear friend Gowing dropped in, but wouldn't stay, saying there was an infernal smell of paint. April the 4th, tradesman still calling. Carrie being out, I arranged to deal with Horwin, who seemed a civil butcher with a nice clean shop. Ordered a shoulder of mutton for tomorrow to give him a trial. Carrie arranged with Borset the butterman and ordered a pound of fresh butter and a pound and a half of salt ditto for the kitchen and a shilling's worth of eggs. In the evening, Cummings unexpectedly dropped in to show me a Meerschaum pipe he had won in a raffle in the city, and told me to handle it carefully, as it would spoil the colouring if the hand was moist. He said he wouldn't stay, as he didn't care much for the smell of paint, and fell over the scraper as he went out. Must get the scraper removed, or else I shall get into a scrape. I don't often make jokes. April the 5th, two shoulders of mutton arrived, Carrie having arranged with another butcher without consulting me. Gowing called, and fell over scraper coming in. Must get that scraper removed. April the 6th. Eggs for breakfast simply shocking. Sent them back to Borset with my compliments, and he needn't call any more for orders. Couldn't find an umbrella, and, though it was pouring with rain, had to go without it. Sarah said Mr. Gowing must have took it by mistake last night, as there was a stick in the awl that didn't belong to nobody. In the evening, hearing someone talking in a loud voice to the servant in the downstairs hall, I went out to see who it was, and was surprised to find it was Borset, the butterman, who was both drunk and offensive. Borset, on seeing me, said he would be hanged if he would ever serve city clerks any more. The game wasn't worth the candle. I restrained my feelings, and quietly remarked that I thought it was possible for a city clerk to be a gentleman. He replied he was very glad to hear it, 
and wanted to know whether I had ever come across one, for he hadn't. He left the house, slamming the door after him, which nearly broke the fanlight, and I heard him fall over the scraper, which made me feel glad I hadn't removed it. When he had gone, I thought of a splendid answer I ought to have given him. However, I will keep it for another occasion. April the 7th. Being Saturday, I looked forward to being home early and putting a few things straight. But two of our principals at the office were absent through illness, and I did not get home till seven. Found Borset waiting. He had been three times during the day to apologise for his conduct last night. He said he was unable to take his bank holiday last Monday, and took it last night instead. He begged me to accept his apology and a pound of fresh butter. He seems, after all, a decent sort of fellow. So I gave him an order for some fresh eggs, with a request that on this occasion they should be fresh. I'm afraid we shall have to get some new stair carpets after all. Our old ones are not quite wide enough to meet the paint on either side. Carrie suggests that we might ourselves broaden the paint. I will see if we can match the colour, dark chocolate, on Monday. April the 8th, Sunday, after church, the curate came back with us. I sent Carrie in to open the front door, which we do not use except on special occasions. She could not get it open, and after all my display, I had to take the curate, whose name, by the by, I did not catch, round the side entrance. He caught his foot in the scraper and tore the bottom of his trousers. Most annoying, as Carrie could not well offer to repair them on a Sunday. After dinner, went to sleep. Took a walk round the garden and discovered a beautiful spot for sowing mustard and cress and radishes. Went to church again in the evening. Walked back with the curate. Carrie noticed he had got on the same pair of trousers, only repaired. He wants me to take round the plate, which I think a great compliment. End of chapter